Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. It's a blessed morning. And blessed be the name of the Lord, our God, and our Father, and our Savior. We are continuing with the theme, Bible Characters and Lessons. We're talking about Abram, who is now named Abraham. God changed his name because he changed the man. And our subject for today is two angels visit Lot. Uh, Abraham has everything to do with this. Two angels visit Lot. Now, you know, we, we find God and angels. I'm talking about in this account that we're going to go over today. We find God and angels Spending time with, it's an amazing thing, and fellowshipping with, and talking with Abraham as with a friend. That's an amazing thing. God will do that to us, with us also. Uh, we, we, we've got to extract that. We also find that God confides in Abraham what he is about to do. What is God telling Abraham for? Why would God be confiding in Abraham? But he did. He did. And see, that's what we do with friends. They don't have to know, but we just tell them. We just inform them. Now, when God confides in Abraham, uh, it, 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 it prompted, God always has a reason and a purpose, it prompted, prompted, uh, uh, Abraham to pray and intercede in behalf of two wicked cities and his relatives. That's Lot and his family. Oh, this is such an amazing thing. The Bible says, surely the Lord God will do nothing except he reveal his secrets unto his servants. He's not going to do anything unless he forewarns us, unless he tells us, unless he instructs us. Oh, the Lord is good. And we see in this account today, we see in the heart of Abraham that there was mercy and that there was grace and that there was long-suffering for the most perverted and wicked people. That's what was in his heart. Oh, sometimes we want to get rid of them. Have them receive their just due you know how it is with the wicked. They wicked, man. Doing you in, conniving, just want to stay away from them. And our hearts don't like them. But in Abraham's heart, there was mercy and grace and long-suffering toward the most perverted, wicked people. He wanted for them to be spared. He didn't want them destroyed. That's the heart of Abraham. He wanted to give them more time. Now, he, he, he didn't want the probation to close on them, just close. Right? So wicked, let's just close up the probation. He didn't want that. He wanted for them more grace, not condemnation. That's the heart of Abraham. Abraham was a godly, righteous man living the character of love, worthy of emulation. Uh, let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, O oh Lord, we, we ask your power, your spirit, to come over us. Uh, we need a change. We need to be more like Jesus, which Abraham was a fit example of. Lord, help us as Christians not to despise and hate the wicked. And they are wicked, and they are doing evil. And we'll continue to do evil in most cases. But Lord, help us to have the heart of God. We don't go along with it, but we don't despise and hate him either. Help us to be more like Jesus and follow the example of Abraham in this matter. Oh, Lord, help us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, folk. Let's go to the scripture. 
We want to look at uh, a certain narrative today. Two angels visit Lot. Well, what did Abraham have to do with that? <clears throat> Two angels visit Lot. Let's look at it. We're going to start in Genesis chapter 18, and we're going to read, first of all, verses 16 through 19. And, and, and when, what does the Bible say? And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. All right, the Lord the creator of the universe comes down to spend time with, to bless, to fellowship with, and to talk with, and to reveal things to Abraham, his servant. And they talked for a while. And I just want to highlight here the, the, the thinking of God. God said, should I hide from Abraham that which I do? That shows that the heart of God is to make known everything. Through his servants. To open up what he's about to do. And the reason he's about to do it. And then God testifies of Abraham. I'm trusting that he has the same testimony of you and of I. God said concerning Abraham, I know him. Uh, this is the eternal life that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. He knew God and God knew him. God said, I know him. Moreover, he will command his children and his household after him. And they will do justice and judgment. They're going to keep the way of the Lord. Abraham is going to lead his family to the altar. He's going to be a good example in his house. He's, he's going to lead his own household first to the Lord. Because he knows me and I know him. Oh, what a testimony that God is declaring concerning Abraham. Do I know the Lord? Does he know me? Will he say that about me? We know that he knows about us. He created us. But does he know me? Will he say, I know him. I know her. They're pure. They're righteous. They instruct in the way of the Lord, their house and everybody else. That's the way they live. That's what they do. That's what they speak. I know this about him. Let's carry on. Let's look at Genesis chapter 18 and verses 20 through 22. And what does the Bible say? And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which is come unto me and if not I will know and the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom but Abraham stood yet before the Lord now let's look at this more carefully now, now, now God is revealing something to Abraham he said the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great the injustice that's going on down there the hurt that's being inflicted on people. It's great. Their sin, God said to Abraham, is very grievous. It's grievous to him. It's hurting him at his heart. And then God says, I'm going to go down now and see whether they have done fully according to all of the cry that's coming up from that place. And if that's the case, God said, I'll know it. All right. And then the Bible says that the men, they were angels, by the way. Two angels accompanied the Lord, the Lord of all of the earth, the Lord who is the creator. That's who was with Abraham. The Lord and two angels in the form of men. And it says the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. So the angels are going down, they're walking away, they're leaving, they're going towards Sodom, and Abraham is still standing before the Lord. 
All right. Oh, that we might live in the Lord's presence. Oh, that we might find ourselves often in the presence of the Lord. And, you know, usually there's angels there, too. It's all of heaven uh, that accompanies us when we're in that type of deep fellowship and union and communion. But let's follow this narrative. What, what, what happens next? The Bible says in Genesis 18, 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Now, he knew that they were not going down there just to sit around and maybe fellowship with a few folk. But Abraham knew he went down there. They went down there to see what was going on and to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham asked a question. He, he's talking to the Lord. And he's not more righteous than the Lord. He is not more loving than the Lord. God is just allowing him to reveal what's in his heart. For, 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 for our benefit. So that we can see how we must be toward the wicked. In the church, out the church, in the family, out of the family, next door, on the job. How should our attitude be toward the wicked? It's easy to, to return hate for hate. It's easy for us to despise folk that despise us. What's difficult, what requires the Spirit of God is to do contrarywise. And he said to the Lord, wilt thou destroy the wicked? I mean, the, the righteous with the wicked. In other words, he's pleading for the wicked here. See, see, see Abraham could have said, listen, be Sure to bring the righteous out of that before you destroy the wicked. That's not what he said. Be sure to destroy all the wicked. And I mean destroy them quickly. they they just terrible folk. But spare the righteous. Don't let the fire get near them. Just like the three Hebrew boys. When you burn up the place, don't let the fire burn them up. He could have done that. But get rid of the wicked. He, he, that was not his attitude. But thou also destroy the right, righteous with the wicked. And then it goes on. Let's look. Because I want to be clear. And what Abraham was saying to the Lord. What does it say? And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. Now this is the final leg of their communion. Per adventure, he's saying to the Lord, if there are ten righteous found there, will you please spare the whole place? Not just the ten righteous, but the whole place for their sake. And the Lord said, yes, I'll do that if I can find ten there. But it started with fifty. Abraham started off and saying, Lord, if you find fifty there, will you spare the whole place? God said, yes. Then he said, if you, if you find forty-five, will you spare the whole place for forty-five? God said, yes. And then he said, well, listen, if it's just forty there, will you spare it for forty? And God said, yes. And then he went down to thirty. Will you spare it for thirty-six? God said, yes. Will you spare it for twenty? God said, yes. And then he finally said, well, look, I, I, I'm not going to speak but one more time. I'm, I know I'm going overboard, but will you spare the whole place? Not just the righteous. Will you spare the whole place for ten's sake? And the Lord said, yeah, I will do that. And I, I know that Abraham thought but lots there. He got his wife. He got his children. He got his family. Surely there must be ten righteous in the place. And God has promised I'll spare it. You know, when, when time finally ends and probation is closed, that means that there are none who can be reached or saved. When it reaches that point, then God ends it, just like he did with Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, let's look at what happened. These two men leave and they go down towards Sodom, okay? They're going down there to destroy the place. And what happens? They, they come down and lots there. He done moved in among the wicked. Lord, help us not to do that. Luke, I mean, Genesis 19, verses 1 through 3. What happens? And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. 
And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Sodom was a terrible place. It wasn't a place you wanted to visit. Stuff happened to people when they went to Sodom. Wicked men, violent men. Lot knew that. And he saw these two men. And at this point, he didn't know that they were angels. The Bible says many have entertained angels unaware. And he saw these two men and he, he, he because he sat by the gate. And he bowed himself. He's courteous. And he's hospitable. And he says, listen, here's what you do. Turn into my house. And, 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 and tarry all night. In other words, let's get out the street, man. You, you, you in danger out here. And what you can do is rest, wash yourself, have a good meal, and then get up when the sun is up, <laughs> and then leave. And then the angel said, well, no, no, that's all right. Thank you so much. But but we'll just abide in the street all night. Now, now Lot knew that wasn't going to work good with them and for them. And the Bible says, and he pressed them greatly. Too often we know somebody's going wrong. We don't press them greatly. We just say, well, okay. <laughs> that's what you want to do. Go ahead and do it. But he pressed them greatly, and they turned in and entered into his house. And you know what he did? He said, the Bible says he made a feast for them. Hospitable man. And they did eat. He ate with angels. He communed with angels because of his hospitality and genuine concern for others. Ah, uh, let's look. Let's continue the narrative. The Bible says in Genesis 19, uh, verses 4 through 8, what happened? What happened here? But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. Mm. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. The reason why I brought them under my roof, you fellas, is that because I don't want you to do what you usually do to folk. I don't want you to, to do this evil thing to them that you do to folk, you follow me? The Bible says before the men could lay down after they came in uh, Lot's house. The men of the city compass the house. They surround the house, old and young, from every quarter. They came from everywhere. Here's some fresh people, you know, for us to abuse. Let's go up here and get them. And they said unto Lot, you know, oh, where are the men that came in? Bring them unto us. Bring them out your house and give them to us. You know why? Because we want to know them. They're talking about something perverted. We know this from the context. They were talking about sexually abusing these two men. You know how we know? Lot said, listen, don't do this wicked thing. Behold, I have two daughters. He offered up his daughters. I never did quite understand that. Which have not known men. He's talking about sexually. That we might know them. Bring them out that we might know them. They're talking about sexual. When God says, I have two daughters that, that have not known men. He's talking about sexual contact and interaction. And then he said, let me bring them out to you. And you do to them whatever is good in your eyes. But only unto these men don't do nothing. That's the reason why I brought him in my house so you won't do this evil thing. What a place to be living in. Ah, uh, the world is fast becoming like that today. And let's go on with the narrative. Genesis 19, 9 through 11. What does the Bible say? And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn and he will need to be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. 
The, these evil men are contending with God and angels. The Bible reveals that one angel put to death 185,000 mighty warriors. That's one angel. They didn't know what they were fooling with. But what they said, the wicked men of Sodom said to uh, uh, Lot, stand back, get out of the way. You know what? We're going to do worse to you than what we're going to do to them. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, we're going to do you too. We're we going to know you too. You sticking up for them. We got something for you. And they pressed upon the man Lot. Yeah, yeah. They were going to get him too. And they came near to just tear up the door, to just break into the place. You, you're not going to bring them out. We know how to. We know what to do. But the men, that's the angels, put forth the hand and pulled Lot into the house and shut the door. What God shuts, no man can open. <laughs> and then they smoked the men at the door with blindness. Uh, they knew there was something supernatural then, especially Lot. Both small and great. And they wearied themselves. They couldn't even find the door. They couldn't see. God, through the angels, rescued Lot. But he's trying to be hospitable to them. Tough situation here. Wicked people. God is revealing why he had to destroy the place. They're pretty far gone. They're going to rape angels. <laughs> Lot and everybody else. Look, they're so perverted that when Lot offered them the women, the, these are men, when he offered them the women, they didn't want the women. They wanted the men. Something wrong. Even if they're wicked, there's something wrong. Let's go on with the narrative, Genesis 19 and verses 13. No, 12 through 14, that's it. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place mm -hmm. because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters and said, Up, get ye out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. Haven't you found that to be the case with so many in the world today? You're telling them spiritual things. You're telling them about the coming of the Lord. You're telling them about prophecy. You're telling them about the signs of the times. And they go, oh, come on. You seem as one that mocks. You're talking foolishness. You're talking ignorance. You're talking stupidity. We don't have to pay that no mind, and then destruction will surely come and take them. The, the, the angel said to Lot, do you have any in the city? And it names the people, your son-in-laws, your sons, and your daughters. Whatsoever, really, it means whosoever, because they're not packing up vans and wagons, taking out property. Only the people. Whatsoever you have in the city, whatever family you have in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place. The Lord has sent us to destroy this place. And when Lot went about trying to tell folk and warn folk and get them prepared to leave, they said, oh, man, you're foolish. You're crazy. Just like they did Noah. Just like they did Noah. And the narrative goes on, uh, Genesis 19, 15 through 17. What does it say? And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, mm -hmm. the Lord being merciful unto them. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Now, the time has come. You know, the angels could have brought them out that night. The men were blind. They couldn't have done nothing. They couldn't have seen them. They couldn't have stopped them. And then the angels are with them. They couldn't have prevented anything. Mighty angels. But no, they let them rest. And the Bible says in the morning when they arose, the angels hastened them. Come on. Let's go. 
take your wife, your two daughters, lest you be consumed with this place. And then the Bible says, while Lot lingered, that's what we do oftentimes. That's why we're not delivered from sin. That's why we're not delivered from that appetite, from that uh, foolishness on the television, from those attitudes, uh, from, 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 from those lazy habits. The reason why we're not delivered is because we linger in them. Well, then one day the Lord will deliver me. I'm praying that the Lord help me. And the reason, the, the, the real reality is we're lingering there. We, we cling. The Bible says you uh, love the ways, of, uh, the ways of unrighteousness. We're used to it. We cling to it. And while he lingered, the men laid hold on his hand. That's, that's God being merciful. And on the hands of his wife and his two daughters, the Bible said the Lord being merciful. And then he, they brought them out. They helped him. Just come on. Grab him by the hand and just come on. Come on. Let's go. That's Abraham's prayer being answered. God saving the righteous. And they gave them instructions. Escape for your life. And look not behind you. You know, already lingering. But the angel said, listen, you haste. You, you make haste and escape for your life. And don't look back. Don't look behind you. They all understood that. And I want you to know that uh, Lot contributed to his wife's demise. I didn't say he's just totally responsible. Plus, the wife had children back there. And family members. Perhaps grandchildren. You know, she didn't want to leave them behind. And What's going to happen to the place? God said it's going to be destroyed. Is it being destroyed? I mean, what's going on back there? It's hard for me just to leave like this. But the angel said, escape for your life and don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. We look back. Oftentimes, looking back takes us, takes us back. You know, when you look back, you do like Peter did when he was walking on the water. You begin to sink. You take your eyes off Jesus. You look back. You look back at that person who's so nasty and tricky and lying. You, you, you look back at that sin that you used to love with that, with that man, that woman you used to do things with. And you look back. You look back at that, 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 that meal you used to love to eat. And, you, and, and if, when you look back, you take your eyes off Jesus and too often you go back. And, and, and furthermore, when you're looking back, you show that it's still in your heart. You might have left physically. But in your heart, you're still back there in Sodom. And it's a painful thing to too many to leave sin and evil. We've got to learn this lesson, not to linger. And leave and don't look back. We don't have to stay slaves to anything that's unlike the Lord. And here's what happened, Genesis 19, 24 to 26. What does the Bible say? Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. His wife, Lot's wife, was walking behind him. And she being behind him, he, he's not looking back. She being behind him, looked back and became a pillar of salt. The daughters, looking forward, they left. At some point, when they got up into the mountains, they realized that mama's not here. My wife's not here. She must have looked back. We can't look back. We've got to leave sin. We've got to leave evil. We've got to leave the ways of the world and service to Satan and service to selfishness. We, we, we've got to leave this thing of having a spirit and an attitude and, 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 be, and despising the evil. That, that, that's not going to get me into heaven. That's not the character of God. God has mercy on the wicked. God loves the wicked. He doesn't love their wickedness. But he's not mad with them. <laughs> Hateful toward them. Lord, help me. Lord, help us to have the spirit of Abraham when it comes to the wicked. Uh, Lord, spare them. 
Lord help them. Spare the righteous, but spare the wicked also. Flee and don't linger, folk. Flee and don't look back. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, help us to not linger in anything that's unlike you. And help us not to look back because surely we'll sink just like Peter did when he took his eyes off Jesus and looked elsewhere. Help us not to look back because our heart is really back there. That's why we look back. Help us not to look back. And help us to be like Jesus who Abraham was a good example of. Help us to be merciful toward the wicked. Toward the perverted. Help us to intercede for them. That they might be spared just a little longer. That they might have more grace. So that they might eventually repent. Help us to have that mindset and that spirit and that attitude, Lord. You bear along. You bear along with the sinner. With the rebel. Help us to be like you, Lord. You cause your rain to fall on the just and the unjust. And the sun to shine on them too, Lord. You feed them. You wake them up. I'm talking about the wicked and perverted. Help us to be loving and kind and merciful. Just like you, Abraham, exemplified that for us. Make us the same way, Lord, please. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a word.